Today, I'll be talking to you about poo and farts. I'm kidding, obviously, but it's not far from the truth. I'll be talking to you about ammonia, farts, nitrogen, and how it affects the environment. Now, as I'm sure you're all aware, our planet is in peril, with climate change threatening apocalypse. But as Sherlock Holmes would say, it's quite elementary, my dear Watson. It is, figuratively and literally, nitrogen and carbon being the elements in question. Now, why do I care about this? Well, people my age don't like to admit this, but I'm an avid gardener, and I have been for a while now, and nitrogen has an impact on my hard work. Now, nitrogen also has some other spillover effects. It threatens animal deaths, it threatens plant deaths, and increases the rate of global warming. However, I'm a man with priorities. Now, you're all familiar with the carbon cycle, right? You know, the ones that's been repeated for decades onwards, been ignored time and time again. Well, while carbon is the more popular, more mischievous brother, nitrogen is the just as mischievous younger brother. It's one of the most abundant elements in the world. However, too much can be harmful. So I'm gonna be teaching you guys how we can combat this effectively. To start off, what is the nitrogen cycle? The nitrogen cycle, in its simplest, is a biogeochemical process through which nitrogen is converted into different forms, consecutively passing from the atmosphere to soil to organisms and back into the atmosphere. In a very simple way, think of it as money. When you spend money in an economy, you have to convert it into different forms, cash, credit, or electronic. You're doing this so it can be better accessed by different people and for different purposes. That, in essence, is what nitrogen is doing. The most common impact of excess nitrogen is the release of nitrogen oxides from the combustion of fossil fuels. This can create acid rain, smog, and air pollution, which are all damaging to our health. There are two forms of nitrogen that cause the most harm, however, nitrate and ammonia. During acid rain, Nitrate will sneak into waterways and effectively steal nutrients from the soil, such as magnesium and calcium. These are all imperative for the growth of plants. This will cause plant death and the local environment being unable to sustain any more life. Nitrate can also be converted by bacteria into nitrous oxide gas. At high altitudes, this will react with the light emitted by the sun and slowly eat away at our ozone layer. This is very concerning because ozone shields us from UV radiation. Without it, it increases the rate of skin cancer and eye cataracts. Think of it as Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but a lot slower. Next up, ammonia. They're stinky, make us giggle, and disrupt the class. But scientists take this gas seriously. Ammonia pollution is decreasing the acidity of the air. Certain habitats, such as peat bogs, rely on the air being slightly acidic. Without it, the habitat will naturally fall apart. Ammonia, among other things, also causes eutrophication. In its simplest, eutrophication is when fertilizers are carried away by rainwater into lakes. The nitrogen causes excessive growth from bacteria and algae to the point where they block out the, layer, the, f the surface of the lake. This causes plants at the bottom unable to get any light energy to slowly die off. When these algae eventually die off, they're broken down by bacteria, which consume oxygen in the process, creating, in effect, an ecological dead zone. In its simplest, think of it as a trust fund child with a gambling addiction, being the crops. It needs money to gamble, since it's an addict, so he achieves this from getting it from the soil, the trust fund. But he's an addict, he wants more. So he asks his father for more, being the fertilizer. Of course, when you gamble, you win some. The growth of crops, higher yields. However, you, you, you lose. You lose a lot. And he starts getting into debt. And that's the fertilizer runoff. I know the biggest question, however, is what can we do? Well, like most environmental problems, without substantial worldwide policy change, nothing can be done to an effective manner. However, there are a few things that you can do yourself. You can eat or eat less dairy and meat products. Nitrogen is used to produce crops, but a lot more gets used up when feeding animals. So the less you eat, the better off the environment is. You can walk or cycle. As traffic is one of the biggest contributors to nitrogen oxides, you emit the least if you walk or cycle. Or you can get your energy from green sources. As I said before, climate action needs substantial worldwide policy change. However, the less fossil fuel you use in daily life, the better off the planet is. 
any change starts with you. Thank you.